Ireland is the only country in the world to have a musical instrument, a harp, as its national symbol. The emblem can be found on our flags, coat of arms, passports and currency, and even on the famous pint of black stuff. But what is the history behind this stringed instrument in Ireland? And why does the harp, or clarshock in Irish, hold such significance here? The earliest evidence of harps in the world can be found as far back as ancient Egypt, 5,000 years ago. The instrument was introduced to Europe by the Phoenicians, and an evolved form of the harp eventually made its way to the Irish shores around the 8th century, which can be seen on manuscripts and Christian stone crosses from that time. And it is said that the last High King of Ireland, Brian Boru, was a fine harp player himself. During the Middle Ages, the Irish harp reached its peak popularity, with Gaelic harpers revered all around Europe. In old Gaelic society, harpers often studied for decades and were central to the Gaelic social life. They were so valued that their nails, which they used to pluck the wire strings, were protected under Breton law. We actually have some written accounts of Irish harpers around this time. Shortly after the Norman invasion of Ireland in 1185, Prince John arrived in Watford with his royal clerk, Gerald of Wales. Although he wasn't impressed with the Irish people at that time, he did say that they had one redeeming quality, the harping skills. To quote him, The only thing to which I find that this people apply a commendable industry is the playing upon musical instruments. They are incomparably more skillful than any other nation I have ever seen. The harp as a symbol for Ireland was cemented by actually Henry VIII in 1531. After he declared himself king of the land, he chose the harp as the symbol for the Irish. However, during this period of Irish history, Celtic and Gaelic traditions were losing ground to the imposing British influence, and the harp became a symbol of resistance to the crown of England. The harp was a source of pride and hope for the Irish, and eventually became a threat to the growing empire. To combat this rise in the rebellious Irish, harps were ordered to be burnt, while harpers were commended and executed. In 1603, Queen Elizabeth ordered her officials in Ireland to hang the harpers wherever found and destroy their instruments, in an attempt to gain control of the island. And at the same time, she was enjoying Irish dances performed at her court in London by her harper. In 1652, the English Parliament passed the Act for the suppression of Irish music. The act was aimed to eliminate Irish harpers and their music, as well as any gatherings where harp music was performed. Despite the oppressive measures imposed, the Irish harp managed to survive, mainly down to a few dedicated individuals who risked punishment to preserve their musical heritage. It took nearly two centuries for the harp to be celebrated once again in Ireland, and in 1792, a festival was established with the aim of reviving the old lost tradition. Their efforts sparked a renewed interest in the harp and its music, paving the way for its revival in the 19th and 20th century. The harp played an important role in the Irish Rebellion of 1798, when Wolf Tone and the United Irishmen adopted a flag featuring a yellow harp on a green background. Along with the motto, it is the new strong and shall be heard. As Ireland continued to fight for its independence in the following years, the harp became intertwined with the spirit of Irish nationalism. Today the Irish harp stands as the enduring symbol of Ireland. Although it may have yielded its popularity to instruments like the flute, the fiddle and the tin whistle, the oppressed harpers of the past had the final say as the harp has become one of the most recognised symbols of Ireland.